today, let's make a shipping container for 3D printing. So first, we can rotate the view with middle mouse button and with middle mouse alt button, I can snap different view and you have here the view where you are. Here with the corner rectangle, I can start from the origin and draw the base of my container. If you, if you hit equal key, you will have all the measurements. In this case, I translated the original measurements into a 135 scale, which gives us on the width 168 millimeters. And I hit tab for the width 28 millimeters. I can now select my face and push everything towards the top and I'm using 67 millimeters as the height. So to snap G, V, and I snap it to the center of the edge here and with control, I can snap it to my main ground here represented with the red line. So the next step is gonna be the little undulated shape here. So I've counted them, there is uh, 20, roughly 20 extrusions. To divide this edge by 20, I start here with a line. Then with the rectangular array, I can hit Y key and snap it to the end here and divide it by 20. All right, so now I can focus just on one shape and I'm gonna redo the rectangular array. So here I'm just gonna eyeball it, so roughly this shape. And I can also find the middle of those two lengths here. And G and finding the middle here. So now if I duplicate and use the symmetry with Alt X and F, I can have the perfect symmetry of my shape that I have on the left side. All right, so I can adjust and make sure that they are on the same points. So I think it's a little bit more deeper, something like that. Now we're gonna duplicate this one again with the rectangular array. And I've drawn a little line here just to find the middle. So Y axis, and then I snap to the middle here. And as you can see, we have to put 19 because the first one act as one. So if you hit 20, it's gonna create an offset. Something you have to understand about the rectangular array, the original piece count as one. So that's why we use 19. And then we can select all of them. J and we have our cut line ready. Now I select my container, C to cut everything, and X to delete. All right, I'm not really happy with it, so I'm going back to the array, and before doing the array, I'm gonna actually fillet those points. So now we have our first side, we can just symmetry with add X, Q to merge in order to remove the sewing line in the middle. Let's work on this side. This time I'm gonna add this little squarish detail. If you hit tab, you can expand on both sides. Now 
Now we can symmetrize everything. I'm gonna do the same for the top part here that we can see. I'm just gonna eyeball it. So roughly this thickness. And then pushing inside. So here I want to match this face. So I can click here, match face, and it will be aligned. I think it's not really aligned, so I'm just gonna push it back a little bit, just like that. All right, so now we can again opening the gap here and again duplicate on the other side. And also on the bottom. So here to use the container as the main axis of symmetry, I can hit F, center, and draw the line here. And we have it on the bottom. It's actually slightly higher. And again, duplicate. I can also start to add this little element here. Slightly going outwards like this. This one also. This side also. And with Control R, I can add an edge here. It's gonna be roughly the thickness of this piece here. Alt text for the symmetry. So back on this um, area, I can use the same curve that I used before. So select those edges, Shift D, and then I have my part here back. So now we're going to duplicate this one to the end of the rectangular, ar rectangular array. GV to change the point and then control to this edge. So now we want to fill the gap between those two sketches. So rectangular array again on the X axis and then I'm gonna snap to the middle of the previous sketch that I snap on the left side here. You can delete one and now I can join them. If I hit G, as you can see, there is a supplied edges intersect or overlap. It's because we have an overlapping of sketches here. So we need to snap them together, delay them with X and then L again to fill the gap. Or you can just snap it on top of each other's. I think that's the fastest way to do it. And now when I select everything i can hit j and it's gonna be joined and hit dot to isolate the selection now i can cut again this part so i'm gonna make sure that it's going out of the shape otherwise the cut cannot be performed selecting c cut and x to delete and here we are we have our part so we can then match the faces duplicate again top to bottom and it's ready all those extra detail here we can add a bit more thickness i think it's going more outside then with the circle tool i'm adding some of the holes here pushing it w select the shape and it's doing circle same here and as you can see there is like a subtle fillet here so we can reproduce it also on the model So now I've symmetrized everything except for the main door part and I'm gonna run a boolean on everything. 
So now we have just one solid. I'm gonna add those very thin details. So we control R, tab to change the direction. And then pushing inside, same on the right side, roughly dividing by three. And pushing here inside with W, selecting the container and removing this part doing the same on the other side and then i select this face match face we have the same measures now let's move on the front door i'm gonna adjust a little bit those two thickness here as it's supposed to be 3d printed i'm leaving some thickness so it's not too thin this time we're going to start with a centered rectangle to find roughly the shape of the door. So it's actually here, snap to this face, this one here. So there is some, uh, some room on the top before the beginning of the door, but not at the bottom. Now we can divide by 3 this 8 on the y axis, 1, 2, 3, enter it, and then I'm starting my rectangle from the line and I'm going to do it roughly the same size At this point uh, you just have to eyeball it and duplicate snap duplicate snap we have a cut in the middle from the middle I'm defining the thickness of the this area and with the cut tool here trim tool can remove what I don't need and then same process selecting my faces Pushing it inside, W, select the container, and I can work on the depth. I don't need those rectangles anymore. And here I can run a fillet on those edges. I got one. With the center rectangle again, I can define the locker here. And here I'm gonna duplicate it, thickness, create the secondary shape, and remove the fillet here, I'm pushing it back. So as it's supposed to be 3D printed, I don't want to have too much empty spaces between my objects, so I can actually merge them together. With P, I can create a cylinder, B, make it as a new object, just a secondary detail for the attach for the attach here for example just to add like something a bit more interesting how to cut the inside of the door i'm gonna reuse the same square shape that i have here i'm gonna retrace the line with the p tool again for the pipe i'm gonna remove the thickness of the door here so like 0 0.2 millimeters sounds like a great measure just to add like a panel line so it doesn't look too flat i'm gonna do the same thing here 0 0.2 i'm gonna make sure that the part goes inside otherwise it's gonna create some resin traps so now i'm gonna add like this little panel also that we see on the reference shift to have like the parallel this line and i can trace the rectangle here shift and i'm going to the near the bottom that bring it back at the right place i resnap it just to make sure it's in the right place then p again for the pipe tool w select the container and 0 0.2 create the insertion just to add this secondary detail that we have here it's maybe not the best thing here so let's try to fix it so instead of this i'm gonna use the offset tool o 0 0.2 to create the gap here and then i'm gonna push but just the outside here to be you 0 0.2 again 0 0.2 right click and we have the same idea so maybe a little bit too thin so let's do it again so 
I'm gonna offset it of 0 0.4 on the linear so there is no rounded edges at the corner click OK and now I can use this, just the outline push it back in the container so 0 0.2 would be enough and we have the same detail okay symmetrize I'm gonna place now the inch here so I'm gonna stay simple I'm not gonna use like the, the same things like going each side I can start with the three point rectangle so I define the height and then the width so let's shape it like the reference we have something like that maybe slightly rotated and P here to create the same idea for R and then I'm gonna connect this to this and select this face rotate it the z-axis like that so it's inside so with the measurement tool I can see that this detail is actually one millimeter so for a 3d printed version uh, that would be way enough it's just to give some uh, detail but uh, we don't have to go that deep so just gonna mesh them and then again the rectangle are a four time so I went a little bit too far here. Symmetry. And the last detail gonna be like those tubes here. Equal, I think two millimeters would be great, maybe 1.5 millimeters. So it's supposed to be 3D printed. So again, I'm gonna emphasize a little bit the size so it's two millimeters it's slightly more bigger than the reference but it needs to be printed so that's why i'm emphasizing a bit more the size and here i'm gonna connect to the top i think the top part is actually a bit more higher looks like a cylindrical shape that is connected with I'm gonna stay quite simple here. I'm gonna add this little detail. I think it can be interesting. Make sure that it goes inside. So it's one block, one mesh. So here's the final model for a 3D printed uh, miniature. I think it's uh, I think it's enough in terms of detail. And uh, now let's move on to the printing part. Here we are now in Litchi. Tutorial is not really about Litchi. So I'm gonna just show you quickly how I made it. I'm rotating slightly the container so it's not perfectly straight. I'm trying to avoid flat area. The first thing that I'm doing is here in Magic, I'm adding a raft so it's not touching the plate. Then I make the hollowing, so two, two millimeters. I'm just gonna create a way less heavier print. The second step is to add holes. So I'm looking for the suction cup here. As you can see, we have a pretty big suction cup here. To solve it, I'm gonna add a hole. I don't need to create a big one, just at the closest that I can, so somewhere here. And if I recal recalculate the suction cup it should be good so now there is almost no suction suction cup this one would be pretty easy to to manage for the printer it's not very deep the third step is to go on the support island and search island when the search is done you can just click on add support to all island now technically speaking you can print this object but we're gonna need way more support in order to support the uh, weight of the container so what i do usually is just some straight lines hold in shift and i fill the whole area just like that and when it's done 
should look like this. And this is actually printable and shouldn't fail. Here is my uh, printing settings. I'm using a Syria Tech resin, gray, uh, fast. I actually use the same settings than a guy named GD3D Tech, if I'm not mistaken. I will put the link in the description. He, he made a whole Google Doc with all the explanation. So I basically follow what he said. The only thing I change is the lift speed where I let 40, just to be sure there is no uh, lines. And uh, I'm not really taking care about the, the speed. I'm not running a factory. So I, I'm, I'm okay to spend 30 more minutes on the print. And at least I'm sure it's, it's gonna be successful. And the exposure time is two seconds, but it's based on my resin settings on their website. And the layer thickness is a 0 0.05. And I'm using a uniformation GK2. Well, it's a fail because the VAT wasn't full enough. After restarting the printing, the second time was good. I moved on the painting, a bit of rust, a bit of chipping, and it's all done. And here's the final result. If you like this video, you know what you have to do. It says subscribe.